ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره indeed all praise is due to allah and as such we should praise him seek his help and we seek refuge in allah from the evil which is in ourselves and the evil which results from our deeds may yahdihi allah fala mudilla la wa may yudlil fala hadiya la for whom so ever allah has guided none can misguide and whoever allah has allowed to go astray none can guide and i bear witness that there is no god worthy of worship but allah ashhadu an la ilaha illa allah Allahu alayhi wa sallam is the last messenger of Allah. Wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. We are continuing with the fourth episode of the series The Empire of Deceit. And the Empire of Deceit series basically identifies something of the history of evil in this world. An evil empire which was set up by Satan in an attempt to bring them from the grace of Allah and make them among the inhabitants of hell the attack fundamentally is a spiritual attack which causes them to fall into idolatry worshiping idols human beings plants and trees planets etc and it also involves drawing them into a and throw the doer into hell at any rate satan challenged god he swore that he would cause human beings to be lost to lose their way in this world to not understand their purpose here to not understand that their god is one and that he is the only one who deserves to be worshiped claim that there is no god it's just a matter of living and dying there's no coming back there is no judgment this is all an accident that's one of the biggest tricks of satan to make people unable to understand from their own life experience the necessity of the existence of god everything in existence points to behind this all the very existence of design in nature is proof in and of itself design is not the product of accident it might be one time or twice but everywhere everywhere we look everywhere we turn there's design everything has a design whether in snowflakes in bits of sand every drop of water every leaf of every tree we've been deluded into thinking it's by accident and anything is possible they will actually sit there and tell you that if you put 100 monkeys in a cave or in a cage and give them a hundred typewriters and let them just bang away at the keys eventually one of them will type out for you the whole quran from fatiha to nas beginning to end or the whole bible whatever any book of major importance they will accidentally somebody banging away at the keys given an unlimited amount of time one of them is going to eventually do it but reality is that the chances of them doing it the very first time any monkey beats away at the keys the chances of him doing it the first try is zero and you have to believe chances are zero so satan plays with people's mind to the point where they can accept the idea that there is no god and that is the ultimate delusion but he operates on the mass of people who do believe in god and cause them to deviate 
from understanding God in the true sense. Either they think that God created great to be involved in the issues of the world. So he just created it and let it run. And of course, if one stops and thinks for a minute, that's also illogical. If God, the creator of this world, is wise, surely he must be wiser than any of us. And all of us agree that if you don't in inform the people who are working in that institution, or who are to work in that institution, what they're supposed to do, your end result will be chaos. They will not do what you want them to do. Similarly, if God created us and didn't reveal to us what is our purpose here, then what do we expect but chaos? So God revealed why we are here. He sent messengers and he sent messages. Satan focuses on those people who believe in the books of Revelation and they're the majority. He causes them to change those books in time until the books actually encourage people to worship idols. Or he causes the books to be lost. them to worship idols. In the end, his goal is to draw people away from the path of God in one way or another. And this is a battle for souls. Satan is the leader of the enemies of human beings. Whether they are from human beings themselves, because you have those among the human beings who are actually a part of the party of Satan. Satanic human beings who call people they are God incarnate. You find them in the past and you find them in the present. In some societies they're called God-men, avatars. A human who says, I am God on earth. In some societies they may call them other things. Jesus was deified and made God incarnate. This is one way in which human beings become Tore unwillingly. Of course, Jesus didn't want himself to be worshipped or to be called God or Son of God, but others did it and he couldn't stop it. Others, like Sai Baba, claims that he is God. This is his choice. He deludes people into thinking that he is, in fact, God incarnate. He becomes an agent of Satan. Otherwise, Satan, as we talked about, focuses on the believers, the one-fifth of humankind, who are not caught up in idolatry. He focuses on deviating them through innovation in religion, through uh, grave worship, through a variety of other sins, which They make coming a major sin. And he focuses also within the building block of the society, the home. Satan tries to attack the home itself. If, it, if he's capable, if he's able of creating chaos in the home, then he has succeeded. Because it's built, it's on the home on the individual family that societies are built. So Prophet Muhammad, may God's peace and blessing be upon him, being the last prophet, knowing the plan, the plots of Satan, he gave advice to every believer as to how to protect his or her home from the satanic influence. So, They should mention Allah when entering. The Prophet ﷺ said, when a man enters his home, he should say, O oh Allah, indeed I ask you for the good upon entering and leaving.
In the name of Allah, we have entered. And in the name of Allah, we have left. And upon our Lord, we have depended. So this is the prophetic recommendation. When we come into our homes, we do so. And when we leave our home, we do so mentioning the name of Allah. This is to remind us of Allah, to be conscious of God. When we come home, as we are conscious of Him at the different times of prayer, and a variety of other circumstances in our lives, when we get up in the morning, when we go to sleep at night, etc. All of these circumstances, in all of them, we should be conscious of Allah. So the Prophet name by seeking refuge in him when entering the home. With that thought, we're going to take a break here, coming back to look at the other ways by which we can protect the home from the satanic influence. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah. In the name of Allah, and may Allah's peace and blessings be on the last messenger of Allah. Then attacks the home and how we can protect the home, guard the home against the satanic influence, the satanic attack. The first advice which Prophet Muhammad sallallahu gave was to mention the name of Allah when entering the home. The second fortification is that of greeting the family, as the Prophet ﷺ had said, after making this supplication before entering, then he should greet his family. In Surah An-Nur, 24th chapter, verse 61, فَإِذَا دَخَلْتُمْ بُيُوتًا فَسَلِّمُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِكُمْ تَحِيَّةً مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ مُبَارَكَةً طَيِّبَةً when you enter homes, greet each other with a blessed and excellent greeting from Allah. And in another narration, Anas ibn Malik related that the Messenger of Allah said, It will be a blessing for you and your family. And yet on another occasion, Abu Umama al-Bahili, he quoted the Prophet as saying, there are three groups of people who all have a guarantee from Allah, the exalted and the sublime. The third among them that he mentioned was a man who greets his family when he enters his home. He has a guarantee from Allah, the exalted. The law is responsible to protect him and to care for him and his family. So, when entering the home, we spread the greetings of peace, Salam Alaikum, which is itself a supplication, asking that the peace of Allah be upon the members of the home. By remembering Allah in this way, and by greeting each other, we are unconcerned within the family. Greet each other regularly, as this was the recommendation of the Prophet. And in the home, we eat and we drink. The Prophet ﷺ encouraged us, whenever we are going to eat or drink, to mention the name of Allah. He said, in a hadith narrated by Jabir ibn Abdullah, if a man... Satan says to his fellow devils, there is neither shelter nor supper for you here. On the other hand, if he enters without remembering Allah, Satan says, you have found a shelter. And if he doesn't remember Allah while eating, Satan says, you have found a shelter and supper. So, this is a warning of the Prophet ﷺ to make sure that one mentions Allah's name when entering. This is to remind us of the source of the home that we live in and the source of the meals that we're eating. It's ultimately Allah. He's the one who's provided for us. So this should be an encouragement to avoid extravagance where people in their homes become very extravagant. They spend huge amounts of money to beautify the home and to, you know, to be, to exaggerate in its beautification, wasting money 
Prophet Muhammad had said that the worst money that a person can spend is keep it simple. Life is simple. Better to use that money for your children's education or for the education of the needy or whatever. Also the food. Some societies waste food at a horrible rate. In every little gathering they have, they prepare huge amounts of food to show off how generous they are. And the food after the gathering is thrown away. This is shameful, cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Both our home and the food in the home. And when we're in the home, what do we do? We also use the bathroom. We eat, it's coming in, and then we have to let it out. So the bathroom is there. And the Prophet, may God's peace and blessing be upon him, reminded us, whenever we go into the bathroom, we say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-khubuthi wal khabaith. O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from evil male and female jinn. The evil forces. So it is important for a Muslim to remember Allah when going in, not to be involved in any corruptions that tends to happen in the toilet. All one has to do is look at the doors of the public toilets. People go in there instead of doing their business and getting out there, writing things on the wall. Seek refuge in Allah when going into these places. And when we come out, we remember Allah again saying, Ghufranak, excuse me, O Allah. So, when we enter the home, when we eat and drink, and even when we use the bathroom, going to the bathroom, we remember Allah to keep conscious of our the Prophet, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, gave us a series of advices to deal with purifying the home from the voice of Satan. Satan's voice is in many homes. The Prophet ﷺ had said, Some people from among my followers will drink alcohol, but wind instruments will be played for them and women singers will perform for them they will make this halal and Allah will cause the ground to swallow them and he will turn some of them into apes and pigs in another narration he said they will be from uh, the people of my nation those who will stringed and wind instruments are lawful that is silk for males. And the wind and stringed instruments, these are the basis for music today. So purifying one's home from the voice of Satan is to purify it of that popular music which people are caught up with, which captivates the hearts, makes people forget God. To this mood changing melody so for Muslims he or she should remove this from the home it doesn't mean that there any sound or any music is haram it is particular forms because we're enjoined to recite the Quran melodiously it's a form of music a mother may sing to her child this is also a form of music songs, whatever, this is also music, this is fine. And it is allowed also to beat the duff, a small hand drum to give a kind of a beat. But the wind and stringed instruments that are well known, these have been prohibited by the Prophet. May God's peace and blessings be upon him. The sixth way by which the home is purified is to purify it of bells. Prophet Sallallahu had said, As a positive note, the Quran should be read frequently in the home. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu had said, Do not make your homes like graveyards, for indeed Satan does not enter a home 
wherein Surah Al-Baqarah is not read. So we try to read Surah Al-Baqarah regularly as well as the other surahs in the home. Read the Quran, reflect on its meaning, protect the home from the satanic influence. Because the Prophet ﷺ had said, everything has an apex. And the apex of the Qur'an is Surah Al-Baqarah. Certainly when Satan hears Surah Al-Baqarah being read, he leaves the home wherein it is recited. In another narration he said, Allah revealed two verses from the Qur'an by which he closed Surah Al-Baqarah. No devil can come near any home in which they are recited for three consecutive nights. These two verses are encouraged to be read and reflected on, obviously, to protect the home and to purify the home from the satanic influence. A further protection is by way of adhkar, or remembering Allah, in any way, any way, which has been prescribed by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For example, he said, That is, there is no God but Allah, who is alone without partners. The dominion and praise are His, and He's able to do all things. If He says that 100 times per day, He will have a similar reward to freeing 10 slaves. 100 good deeds will be recorded for him. 100 of his sins will be erased. And he will have a charm against Satan for the whole of that day until the night. Formulas like this, formulas of remembrance of Allah, as a means of purifying our home, making it a place uncomfortable for Satan. Satan would not find easy uh, rest in that home. He would be constantly driven out. With that, dear viewers, we'd like to thank you for being with us in this episode of the Empire. Protecting the home from the satanic influence. We'll be looking in the next episode at the remaining uh, four pieces of advice which the Prophet gave to protect our homes. And I hope that you will continue to follow the program and we'll see you in the next episode. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.